accepted, exalted, made known. Abba, Father, Papa, you know we're your children and we're about to come home. So as we wait, we cry, we dance, we anticipate, we shout, we laugh, because we know this is the end of the show. And you know we're so ready to go. So let's go. Let's go. So let's go. Friday, May 20th, and you are listening to, and some of you are watching Revival and Souls Radio, and we are live right now. Well, well, Deliverance Bible Church, right, in Hearst, Texas, yep. where since 2016, revival is happening, God is moving, revival is happening. That's the one. Okay, yes. I don't have any notes tonight, and I got a little <laughs> distracted, because usually I see myself on that screen, and I was looking for my camera. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's Friday, May 20th. Yes, it means is. means yesterday was Thursday, May 19th, and everyone got their 19 tattoo, right? Or is that another that time? That was last Friday. Okay, and you're listening to and watching Revival of Souls Radio. I'll just say it again for those who missed it, those who are jumping in late, and we're just really stoked that you are here. And you know, we're, ta- we're in a really awesome time right now at Deliverance Bible Church. If you've never been to this ministry, it's freaking Off amazing. I'll say it that way, uh, because the Holy Spirit's moving, it's powerful, and we're in an actual move of God that happened, well, it started way back in uh, 2016, and now we're heading into another wave of revival. Right yes, now, the are. last month has been crazy awesome and god is just pouring out his power and his blessing and you got to get here and so for all those joining us we're stoked that you're with us also tonight if you have any questions you have any comments you have any prayer requests you have any negative comments go to someone else's page but if you have really positive like hey we love everything you're doing and you're wonderful and you're perfect then you can make comments and you can uh, use the chat for that or as always and this is especially for prayer requests you can text us 24 7 at 682 702 4606 and some human being will respond with actual prayer. Praise the Lord. Hey, before we yeah. do anything, let's just welcome the Holy Ghost like we always do and go for it. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, we're just glad you're with us tonight. Wherever you are, just begin to welcome the Holy Spirit. Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for this time together. We just ask Holy Spirit that you would come and anoint our time together. That wherever anyone is listening, would you just come and invade their space? Come Amen. and just uh, fill them with your joy, fill them with your love and just encounter them in just a very tangible, tangible way. Fill them with your liquid love straight from the throne of heaven tonight. Fill them with your supernatural joy and just give them everything that they need to not let this just be a time that glorifies you and just draws us closer to your heart in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's a great night to be hanging out with the Holy Spirit. And so wherever you are right now is a great time to receive all that he has for you. And just, you know, the greatest way you can start to say, Holy Ghost, I just welcome you. Yeah. And I just say yes to you. So I guess the biggest thing we're going to talk about tonight is preparing for a move of God. Like, can you do it? You know, there I am. Hey, we're having some technical difficulties behind the scene and I finally arrived. And so there you go. Uh, but we've been talking about just personally, as we've been hanging out at Deliverance Bible Church, because God said there's another, another wave of revival coming. And so in this time period where, you know, I guess I'll just try to give this to everyone listening. Can you prepare for a move of God? Can it be done? Is it possible? A lot of people think that the preparation for revival, preparation for a move of God, is suddenly purifying yourself and fixing yourself and trying to make everything work before the Holy Spirit can move. It's quite the opposite. I believe that we have to present ourselves as broken as nothing and that we need Him to touch our lives. And then He moves. If we could do it first, then hey, how could we ever, how would we need Him if we could do it on our own? The whole point of revival is our weakness and our absolute submission to what he wants to do. So the question is, can we prepare for a move of God? For those that have never been in revival, I know a lot of people listening, I know you have, but for those that have never been in revival, it's a wonderful time uh, to kind of like go back and think about these things. But for those who have never been in, 
I would really stress that it is possible and it is a thing you can prepare. You can prepare. And so tonight, I want to give you a few things, but what I want to start with is this. Revival, let me say, if I can put it one, two, three. You can't fake revival. That's to all my friends out there in ministries and churches everywhere around the world. You can't fake it. Like some people are like, we're in revival, we're in revival. If we say it enough, we're in revival. That was something I absolutely told the Lord. I can't do it. I won't do it. It has to be real before I ever call it revival or a move of God. So you can't fake it. Uh, you can't make it. You can't try so hard that suddenly God moves. Oh, we're going to be the best church in the world, and then finally it'll be a revival. And God will see our great works, and then he'll finally— re- you can, So you can't fake it. You can't make it. Really, when it comes to revival, you just have to take it. You just have Amen. to take it. You just have to break and take it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Absolutely true. And uh, and so because we saw revival for years, I think we had a little bit of prerequisite. We understood. We also understood there was going to yeah. be a lot of persecution that some of the people that you thought would <laughs> totally receive, you know, turned into devils on the spot. And, you know, like right. the Wicked Witch of the West, I wish they had melt, melted, but instead they just, you know, go online and treat you like crap. But, uh, but the truth is we were ready. We were actually like prepared. And so that's because we'd been around, around revival and we had heard the stories, we read the books, and we had met the people that wrote the books. I think that's, that's the biggest thing that helped me was getting around people that had actually been at the beginning places of revival. And so in 2016, when the Holy Spirit began to move, we at least had a grid. We at least had, and that was total grace. That was totally the Lord setting us up for such a time as that. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I want to say we're still in this thing. I, I don't think it's waned ever. I think that's been powerful for six, yeah. almost, Amen. how many years is it now? Six years? Yeah. Yes. Six. Yes. Yeah, six. Almost, almost six. Almost six We're coming years. up on six years. Six in the fall. I don't think there's been a single meeting in six years that was like not fire. No. Not full well, of the presence of God. You know, you have to understand that the, how we knew it was revival was that the Holy Spirit came in and took over the meeting. We were... We weren't even necessary anymore, honestly. Right. We're just facilitators of his presence. But, like, but he is still doing that. He's walking in the room and taking over the room on a, on a weekly basis. And as long as he continues to do that, we will yield. Yeah. And you know what? I think that's the key is yielding, giving up, giving in to everything the Lord has for us. A lot yeah. of Christianity we've been taught is works. It's been taught, you know, it's like jumping through the hoops, as one person said this last week we were talking to, and just kind of like, Okay, I'm going to be good. I'm going to try to be perfect. Actually, the whole point of Christianity, the whole point of revival, the whole point of a move of God is the yielding, is submitting, yeah. giving in, giving up. Lord, I, I just raised the white flag, and I'm like, anything you want to do. And that's the only way he gets all the glory, because True. anything well, yeah. else is us is us doing it. It's us making revival. It's us, you know, it's us being so good and professional and performance-minded at what we do that... He, he doesn't get any, any of the glory. And so it's when we yield, when we die ourselves, and we actually can't do anything, that he gets all the glory. Right. And, you know, it's funny you said that because uh, that's one of, that's a problem people have with grace. Yeah. It's true grace is when we're like, I have nothing, I'm a sinner, I'm weak, I'm empty, and I absolutely, totally need God to do all the work in my life because I'll never make it without him. Now, those are, that's, that's the way we came to Christ. How, you know, pay attention. That's how we came to Christ. Total submission, total repentance, total brokenness emptying, emptying ourselves. Well, then it's we're Christians where suddenly we lose that, that wonderful relationship of, I need you, God, and I refuse to do it on my own because I can't do it on my own, and I just yield to you. He actually gets the greatest glory when we give up and we're like, we need grace, we need you, we need help. And I think, well, I, you know, I just thought about one of uh, my good friends for many years. I wish I knew where he was these days. He was like living in South America last time. Brother Bob Skiles. Yeah. Do you remember Bob? And uh, Bob had been in revival. He had been to the move of God in Toronto. He hung out there. He had, he had touched it. And so when we first saw God begin to move way back, way, way, way back in 2003, we had like a six weeks outpour- six week outpouring here. He was right in the middle of it. And he was telling me like, this is God. I've seen it before. This is, t- you know, you want more, more, more. But I remember after that move of God, that quick, quick splash of the Holy Spirit took place. Uh, he would come to our prayer meetings on 6, 6 a.m. Monday mornings. We were praying for revival. God, send a move of God. We just ask you open the heavens, you know. And he would just sit there and he would say, help God, help God. That was his whole prayer. Kind of drove me crazy the first few times. <laughs> and then we'd all finish praying. And he'd be like, God, we just need help. That's all we need. We cannot do it. We need help. And he would just keep calling the Holy Spirit, the helper, helper, we need you to help us. And uh, it's perfect. It's pure. <laughs> I love it. Tonight, wherever you are, just ask the Holy Spirit to help you. But I want to tell you, when you're preparing for a move of God, 
And like I well, let me give you a backstory really fast. For those that don't know, I'll do the fastest thing ever. Is, uh, you know, 2016, the Holy Spirit invades the church on a Tuesday night, September 27, 2016, completely takes the meeting. There was a lot of lead up to this, which was mostly dealing with devils and liars and thieves and everything else the enemy had tried to throw at us. And uh, it took a lot of persecution and uh, perseverance. I think yes, that's, the, that's a good word. It took a lot of perseverance of don't quit because there was a million reasons to quit. And we just knew that God was telling you there's a move of God coming. There's, a, I, I'm, you know, the Lord's like, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. And we felt like dying up until that point. But we kept on trying, you know, God, we just are trusting you. And then September 27, 2016, the Holy Spirit invades, invades the church. I want to just keep saying that invades the church. I got to see it firsthand. I saw it. I saw the heavens open. I saw the power of God descend upon people. I saw the Holy Spirit just refresh and light up people. Uh, and he took the meeting. And he's never, he's never given it back, and I don't want to ever want him to give it back. But uh, so we've been flowing in this. Number one manifestation we've seen, we say it all the time, is joy. It was such a deli- it is such a delivering work of the Holy Spirit. People are giving up on suicide. They're giving up on depression. They're giving because the joy of the Lord is setting them free and strengthening them. And we're seeing healings in the midst of it and miracles. Okay. Well, then a month ago, the Lord began to speak to me and say, there's another way. There's another way. There's another way. And we began to talk about it. It was like, the second we started talking about another wave, it was like the other, the new wave began. It was like, I mean, I think last Sunday blew me away, actually. Yeah. Last Sunday was kind of shocking. It was like a trembling in the room of God's presence and his goodness and his power. And it's only going to increase. And so Amen. I'm trying to prepare my heart. And I'm encouraging anyone out there who's never touched revival or had the Holy Spirit touch you in that way to start preparing your heart. So, so you know, what can you do? Are there things you can, you can, there are some things you can do to prepare yourself for a move of God, for an outpouring of revival. I'll give you like 10 of them if you have time. I'll put it that way. Uh, number one, I'll throw this out there. You can realize the basic fact that you need revival. Every church, every path, like, and I, and I want to tell you, if there's any ministers out there, let me give you a little bit of encouragement. The body of Christ has been bombarded with this idea of like, if you pray for revival, you shouldn't want it to be like everyone's praying for revival to hit their church. And then people are like, oh, you shouldn't do that. You should pray that God moves on the whole body of Christ. Every minister out there, tell those people to shut up and just begin to say, I need revival in my church, in my life. It has to be personal. It has to be where you are. And there's nothing wrong with you being selfish and saying, God, touch me, touch me, touch my church, touch my ministry, touch my life. It has to start that way. You'll never have anything to give away if you keep on feeling bad about asking for this personal move of God. 20 years ago, the Lord said, I'm going to, or 20, what, how many, how many years now? 22, 23, 20, no, we just hit our 23rd anniversary. So, tw- okay, so that means 21 years of praying for revival or yeah. seeking, you know, having a word on revival. I, man, I said, God, you said here, I say here, I agree with you. I'm asking that you touch 310 West Pipeline Road in Hearst, Texas. And Lord, if you touch the guy down the street, that's wonderful. But I'm not the guy down the street. So I'm asking that you would touch this ministry, touch my life. And we just hung out and we just put our eyes on him and said, do whatever you want. But we're just, hold, we're grabbing hold. Tonight, you got to do the same thing with your own life, with your own family. But you have to realize that you need revival. Best scripture I can go to is Acts 3.19, if you have that. Yeah, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. Okay, you need to be refreshed. And the Bible yeah, promises do. that it's over and over. You might have had a touch from God 10 years ago. You need another one tonight. You get one tonight, you need another one next week. God's plan Mm -hmm. for your life is a consistent and constant overflow of refreshing from his presence. So you have to realize you need revival. Number two, I'll just tell you this. You got to start opening your heart to the Holy Spirit for more. It's one of the number one things that changed the people at our church is that statement. Just open your heart. Just open your heart. You might know how to open a lot, you think, or maybe just a little crack, but you have to start with that. Lord, just open my heart. I open my heart. And so uh, scripture, Psalms 24, 7, my favorite. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I mean, everlasting doors. Some people have some doors that have been shut so long on their hearts. They have some gates that have been locked up so long. You're going to have to decide, I'm going to open up and start even praying. Holy Spirit, I open my heart. I open my heart because I know I need more. Number three, ask the Lord to prepare you for being offended. I guarantee a move of God will offend you. Yeah. It offends everybody. I, I go back to the first time we saw revival. I was offended. 
Within 24 hours, I was offended. The Holy Spirit was even touching me, and I was having breakthrough, and I totally got offended by this, by that, by the church. I got offended by one of the guys that worked at the church. I mean, it's crazy. I almost like I almost lost the fire of God because some guy at the church treated to me, treated me wrong, and I was like, you know what, forget this. And I was about to walk out on revival because who knows? I was offended. And I look back and I'm like, that wouldn't normally offend me. It's because in the presence of revival, in the presence of the Holy Ghost at that level, he just starts poking every button. And he starts, po- he's like saying, are you going to open up? Are you going to say yes? Are you going to receive more? And he just keeps doing it. And afterwards, it's kind of funny when you listen, you think about it. But he will, if it, ask the Lord, help me not to be offended. Isaiah 8, uh, 14 is great. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. So the Holy Spirit wants to be a sanctuary to you. He wants to draw you in, but he's, he's going to be a rock of offense. You're going to stumble. When the move of God begins, and even for our church, I'm going to warn you guys, we're right in the middle of this thing, but it's, it's, there's going to be some offenses. There's going to be some more of the Holy Ghost that we're not ready for. So we have to ask the Lord to help us. You know, as I was hanging out with uh, Brandon from uh, Millionaire Cool. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know what? If God's saying another way of a revival, that means he wants to revive something. Well, he can only revive yeah. something that's dead. Right. He goes, here we are living in revival and we think everything's so... He goes, there must be some stuff in us yeah. that still needs new life. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it's really true. We were talking about this at, in our home last weekend. And it was really interesting because on, on a personal level, um, just suddenly the Holy Spirit just revealed something through my husband uh, of something that was, you know, in my heart that I realized was an empty place. And, and my husband said something very profound. He said, I cannot fill that void for you. You're going to have to ask the Holy Spirit to come in and heal that place and heal that void. And that would, that it just hit me of like, whoa, I've been trying, you know, so many times we have certain hurts in our hearts or certain things that we've dealt with. And we try to let worldly things um, fill that void. We try to, you know, fill it, right. whether it be shopping or money or, or relationships, you know, and, and that that's very dangerous where the Holy Spirit, the Father is saying, I want to come in and I want to love that right out of you. I am the balm of Gilead Amen. and I want, I want to do it. And when you said that to me, oh my goodness, I just began to weep because I had this revelation of like, whoa, I have not, that's a place of my heart that I have not allowed the Lord in. And we've talked right. for for years and years now about letting the Holy Spirit in to every, or we call them like the stadium seats of your yeah. heart. And, and just coming in and it's like, whoa, I didn't even know there was this empty space. There was a space in there he hadn't, uh, invaded yet. And just so even all these years later of like, okay, there's some, there is always something, there is always something. there's always something <laughs> because we're very complex people. There's always something, but he's so gentle and he's so tender and he's so wonderful that he, it wasn't, it wasn't like, how dare you act that way? How dare you do this? That? No, he was like, just let me love Amen. that place in you. And it was so refreshing. So when I got into the service Sunday, I was like, you know, because I made, I said on on Saturday when we talked, I said, Holy Spirit, whatever you need to do, I give you permission to do that. And on Sunday, he was just so gentle and just began to love on me in in the service. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And just began to just fill that part of my heart just so, in, in a way that only the Holy Spirit can do because he knows me like no other person knows me and just began to, to love me back to life in a place that I honestly didn't know that I was dead. Amen. So so get ready, get ready. Yes, because get ready. <laughs> ask the Holy Spirit. I actually, ask the Holy Ghost, get you ready because there's always going to be something more. Really, he's trying yeah. to give you a gift. That's and, why we say more, Lord. But he's trying to give you more. more. He's trying to give you more and he knows that you can't receive more if there's something taking up that space. Right. And right. so every time he says more, you have to be like, okay, so we're moving some stuff out of the house yeah. again. But we're going to get better stuff. You know, we we talked years ago about make us wineskins that are ready to receive new wineskins. We you know we don't want to be wineskins that'll break. You know by be a, a being offended or whatever. Make us new wineskins that are ready to receive whatever this new wine is, whatever he has. Right, for whatever us, it is, whatever it is that we are ready. Maybe it's going to be like a, a move of God of like fasting and prayer. No, no, I can't. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> it can't be. No. no I'm, I'm but we will take it. Oh, we would love but it. Hey, if that was it. what it was, but we'd love it. But even if it is, we would but here's love the it. difference. Difference. It won't be fasting and prayer that's sad and crying. And right. Oh, it won't be fasting. pain. No, it won't be pain. It'll be, be joyful, full of grace, happy fasting. fasting and prayer. Happy, yes. Happy fasting. It's that's a new right. move. It's a new move. Uh, I hope it's a different kind of move, but okay, Holy Ghost, uh, because we've done a few 40-day fasts. Not, not famine fasting, Shoo. just fasting. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> We've done some 40s, and I only do them when the Holy Ghost is in it. Amen. Okay, amen. Well, well, let me tell you this. Number, I'll give you a couple more, and we'll take a break. Uh, you got to, number four, number four. You got to decide to keep all the good things God has already given you, meaning things of the Holy Spirit, things of the Word of God, but be willing to throw out everything that you currently have that's false. Now, when the Holy Spirit starts to move, I've seen two two groups of people, okay? The, the one is like... Uh, well, everything we had up until this point is crap because the Holy Spirit's about to move. So if there's a revival, then everything that before this is bad. I'm like, no, no, you, you, you'll miss it. You'll miss it. Because the Holy Spirit's been trying to give you things for years, and you've gotten some things. So every good thing that God's given you, you have to retain in a sense. Uh, like, well, for me, I know 10 years ago, the Lord gave me a huge revelation of grace, and I teach it pretty much every time I get a chance. Well, I'm not going to lose that because I know the Lord gave it to me. Okay, but we have to be willing to throw away everything. Well, we have to throw away the scaffolding. We have to be willing to throw away the wineskins. We have to, they're old. We have to be willing to throw away traditions, throw away religious things, re, uh, you know, repetitious things that we become so accustomed to. And so a lot of churches, I believe, and this is not judgmental, this is just me seeing this in myself too. A lot of times we miss what God's doing because we're like, well, it can't be because, we can't be, that can't be the Lord because this part of my life is so important. I'm going to tell you, I go to a lot of churches. I preach to a lot of churches. I've done all this kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of things we do in the church that are not biblical. They're not bad, but they're not biblical. They're not actual ordinances of the Holy Spirit. And you have to be willing to kind of look at yourself and look what you do and look at your activity. And you have to acknowledge, well, you know, the Lord took that. It's not, I mean, that, that's not biblical. Actually, we're just doing, it's not bad, but it's probably, it could be expendable. And so you hold on to the grace and, and the revelations, and you hold on to the good things God's given you, and you don't just trash them, but you have to be willing to trash <laughs> those things that are flesh, those yeah, things that are, that are nothing. Romans 8, 13 is a great scripture for that. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So we got to be, we, we be Holy Ghost people, and we got to die to the flesh. And that doesn't just talk about sin. It means anything man-made that we celebrate. I mean, some people, I, well, I mean, there's some, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a perfect thing that's not in the Bible, okay? Altar calls are not in the Bible, the way we do them. Like, like altar calls, come to the front, come to the altar, repeat this prayer. It's just not in the Bible, okay? Doesn't mean it's bad, but if the Holy Spirit said, you got to kill that thing because I'm about to do a mighty work where people are getting converted by the thousands, you can't sit back and go, well, I can't let go. You have to be like, well, good point. Maybe, you know, if you're going to do something, that'd be, let me tell you a perfect example. For years, this church has been music driven. Like what yeah, I mean is that's, that's how pe people come to our church. We play music. And obviously we play, we don't play crappy music. You know what I'm saying? We that don't play, good music. we don't play, well, doesn't mean this is crappy. We don't play Hillsong. We don't play Bethel. We don't play, what's the other one? Uh, what's the other church that everyone listens to now? I can't remember. It starts with an E or something like that. Who, I don't know. I, that's how much I pay attention. I'm so okay, out of the circle of worship. But we don't do that. We don't do that. We write. We just write our own songs. And actually, that's we don't right. write our own songs. The Holy Spirit gives us songs on the spot, and they become songs. Okay, right. So we do everything wrong. Okay, we don't have the. We don't have the words on the screen. Very rare we would, even if we did. Uh, so this. So finally, we just don't do music. Why? Because the Lord was moving without the music. That's right. And He was showing us there was more freedom in the season without the music. Okay, some churches would actually tell me, you have to, you have to, you have to. I'm like, why? We don't have a biblical mandate to do these things. They're not bad. They're actually good, but they're expendable because I want the Holy Spirit to have all the freedom that he would ever want to have. I saw uh, Still Called said, but I'm a musician. <laughs> it is who I am. Yeah, he's joking. But it's, that, that's how some pe people are like, well, like he said, it, that's how churches are. They're like, but you have to have praise and worship. Well, we do. We, I mean, first of all, you don't have to at all. But I'm saying, but we do, we all shout and we dance with no yeah, music and right. it's just where the Lord is. Yeah. Elevation. Thank you, Ruth. That's the <laughs> one. Elevation. You just told on yourself. See, I know what you're, no, I, Hey, it's fine. Pray, you know, praise God for them. Bless them. I'm just not going to play their music. You know what I'm saying? Unless the Lord gave it to me and told me to, I, I shouldn't even say I'm not going to, 
because then tomorrow the Lord's like, Sunday is going to be an all elevation set. Okay, just to break my religion. Okay, but you got to be willing to let go. You got to be willing to let go. And then five, I'll tell you this, you got to understand this. So, so let, let the Holy Spirit speak this to you, okay? Revival makes amateurs and children out of all of us. Revival does not make you a respectable, amazing person that everybody wants to be like, okay? Because in revival, you literally get pushed to the ground he gets exalted. It's all about Jesus. No one remembers you because you're bad at any. I mean, really, I, I'll be honest with you. I've preached for twenty more than more than tw- twenty five years. I've been preaching. All, I mean, really, everywhere I've preached. I'm a terrible preacher now. After revival, like I don't know, I don't have the skill. I don't have. I mean, it's just I am a total amateur, and that's what revival does to you. So you have to prepare yourself. It doesn't mean that you purposely become that. It's just that you just you become kids, you become, it, that's, it's a requirement. The scripture I'll give you is Mark 10, 14 and 15. Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means inherit it. Come on. If you're going to touch revival, you're going to touch the move of God. You're going to have to be a kid and you're going to have to let the Lord, this isn't a word, but deprofessionalize you. Yeah, you have to. That's good. That's a good word. Deprofessionalized. Okay. And so you're going to have to let him, I don't know, I guess I, okay. I make jokes about Pentecostals because I have so many Pentecostal friends over the years, but really in the Pentecostal movement, which I love, I, you have to, you have to understand. I love it. I love the organ when the preacher's preaching. I love it. One of these days I'm going to get the opportunity to be that preacher on some stage and there's going to be an amazing organist and I'm just, I'm going to huff and puff and I'm going to make it happen. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get in it. Okay. But, uh, there is an attitude that has kind of shown up in the Pentecostal movement about ex, the, um, exaltation. I know that's that maybe that's not the right where it's like it's like um, networking up and getting higher and and now I'm really anointed and everybody and now I'm really no I used to be this and now I'm really really anointed and it's like you're going up 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 revival is the opposite it's like down 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 you, you got to find yourself in the basement finally and Jesus is the only one being elevated or exalted so. There are ways to get ready. Hallelujah. Thank you for all the new subscribers. If you're not yeah. subscribed, you got to do it. You got to subscribe. It's a great thing to be a part of, it, and we're so blessed every time you do it. And it's great to give away the subscriptions. And before we take a break, I got, I, I've been watching the, the, I've been watching the chat like fly by me and I keep seeing my name and I just realized who's in the chat. It's uh, Chris, right? It, Chris from way back in the day, used to go to this church and uh, loved to dance and run. And let me tell you, brother, we're in a move of God. You should come back down and see us sometime. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a second. Amen. It was a long road, but it was worth it. And now this grace we live in, God knows we don't deserve it. But when the fire fell back in 2016 and we all got free, it was like a holy trance. And just like that, we began to dance. We This isn't going to work. S-O-M Sunshine Wins Hi, do you clean restaurant windows? Sunshine window painting to the rescue. I have a big house with lots of screens. Sunshine window painting to the rescue again. S-O-M SunshineWindowCleaning.com Sunshine
Well, welcome back. You are joining Revival and Souls uh, Radio with Pastor Cletus and Lady Nicole. And we're so glad you're with us tonight. That was a great commercial. I'm laughing. I'm loving it. Thank Amen. you to Sunshine Window Cleaning for doing that. Um, we're so glad you guys are with us tonight. It is Friday, May 20th. And uh, we're live here at Deliverance Bible Church in Hearst, Texas, where since 2016, 16. we've been in a just amazing, real raw move of the Holy Spirit. And you should come check that out. Um, if you are with us tonight, feel free to jump into the chat. We love to yeah, say hi um, everybody. know. Yeah, I didn't did get that. to say hi. Let me say hi to some people. Um, you can also text us, though, before I say hi. Just wanted to let you know you can text us as well um, at 682 702 4606. And you can um, send prayer requests. If you text the word revival to that number, we can keep you connected to everything that's happening here at Deliverance Bible Church, as well as when the show goes live here on Twitter. Twitch or anything else that we have going on um, can just keep you posted there. Um, but we would love to partner with you in prayer and just um, you, anything that you have going on. So you can text the word revival to 682-702-4606. Amen. All right. Who's in the chat with us tonight? I saw um, Kyle. I do remember seeing that. I do remember seeing the Mindens. Um, let's see. Of course, Kilted Preacher yes. um, and uh, Still Called, who is with us all the way from Mexico tonight. Um, he's ministering nice. there. And so you'll be praying for him as he's ministering in Mexico. So good to have you with us tonight. I see um, Exodus Fest just jumped in. Too. <laughs> then, uh, of course, uh, let's see, my son, Jacob Isaiah. Of course, he's here in the room with us as well. That's my sister. She just jumped in. Awesome. I see the Berthelets are with us, Davises, uh, Weatherfords, Mr. Prosperity. And I pretty sure I saw the Cronkites and Timothy yep. with us. Um, let's see. Janice who else? Nero, I just saw that one. Who? I'm just yelling out subscribers. Okay. I see. Oh, awesome. Um, I see awesome. Blake and Michelle with us. Um, it's good to have Mr. Millionaire Cool. I know he's at working, but he's listening. And so, um, again, I know Christina Pastor Mitch nice. mentioned this recently, but uh, we're just so grateful to all that he's done here um, yeah. in, our, in our building. Just we're actually enjoying a cool studio this evening. No, he's so, been such a blessing. Yeah, praise God. I see Burns is. Uh, let's see who else. I'm just kind of trying to flip very quickly. Um, Distrex is with us tonight. That's um, brother Chris White. Yeah, right. I, I, you know what? I want to guess that, but you're right. It's, it's been right, a long right? time. It's been super so long. We could be wrong on that one, but hey, I'm pretty um, sure that's who's in there. Yeah, uh, it is. All right. Ah, Good to see you, brother. Awesome. Such Amen. a blessing, man. Amen. You're always such a blessing. For real. Praise God. Praying that you are still serving the Lord and still hungry for more Amen. of God wherever you are tonight, man. That's awesome. He was awesome. here in the early days of, yeah. of the ministry. I have to say, brother, man, you'd be shocked at what's happening right now because you were one of these people that are always hungry for a move of God. You always loved the Holy Spirit. And uh, he was kind of like the rowdy guy. Now everybody's <laughs> rowdy. So we appreciate all the rowdiness back then in the Holy Spirit. So it's you'd be shocked, though. Like, well, I'll be honest with you, man. It's, it's amazing. And uh, if you yeah. ever get a chance to get down here, do it. It'll be worth yeah. your time Amen. and Amen. your money. So <laughs> what we're talking about tonight, you know, things you can do to prepare for revival. For those that have never seen revival, maybe you're praying for revival. And then for our church, the Lord is saying another wave. And so we're right in the middle of this move of God, but we're seeing this, I, I keep saying rumbling. That's what this last week felt like. The last few weeks, this, the, a month ago, the Lord said another wave is coming. And it was like the moment we said it, something started shaking in the spirit and it has been amazing and it's only getting better and better. And so we're in preparation mode, you know, and so tonight, are there some things you can do to prepare for revival? I'm, I'm going through 10. I'm on number six right now. If you're just joining us, uh, number six, I'll tell you this, you can do. Okay. Uh, you have to understand, these are some things you have to get. You just have to understand them. Understand this revival will expose your greatest weakness. Revival exposes yeah, our greatest weakness. It doesn't highlight our greatest strengths. Okay. I understand yeah. why people don't want, don't want revival, okay? And by the way, praying for the for rev, praying for a move of God is very respectable. Talking about revival is very respectable. Uh, talking about you know, oh Jonathan Edwards, I'm going to preach and tell you all about the Great Awakening. That's people love that. People eat it up. They love it, okay? But to actually see a move of God like the Great Awakening, which if you've ever read any good book on that, it's what we're seeing in these meetings. Like that's how crazy it is. Uh, just seeing what God can do. When the real thing happens, it just pushes you to the ground and exposes every hidden thing in you. Sounds terrifying, and maybe it is, but it's wonderful, and it's awesome at the same time. So the move of God always exposes what's broken and what's missing. Mark 3, 1 through 5 is one of my favorite stories in the Scripture. He entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. 
They watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Before you even read that, Tim called it. He was like, stretch forth that withered hand. I always think about this story because Jesus comes in the synagogue. There's a guy who has an embarrassing problem. He's the crippled in the room. He doesn't want to show off his malady, okay? And everyone's like looking at Jesus. Oh man, Jesus might heal him. We're going to bust him on, you know, breaking the Sabbath or whatever they thought. And Jesus calls the guy. He doesn't heal him like in the back of the room. Like, here, let me secretly heal you. He's like, stand up in front of everybody. Come forth so everyone can see you. Stretch forth. Show everyone the problem. And I can just always see this guy like, how embarrassing, how humiliating. But he did it. And the moment he did it, the Holy Spirit moves and Jesus is like, you're healed. That's what revival is like. And I, I see still calls. And I remember a uh, pastor preached on stretching out the withered hand back in 2016. He says, wow, it changed my life. <laughs> All I got is withered hands now. Man, it's so true. Just like opening yourself up and saying, there's stuff broken, Lord. Make me stand up and come to the front and Amen. just tell me what the problem is. Amen. And I will, I'll say yes. That's the kind of humility, borderline humiliation that happens when, when the Holy Spirit moves. And I, I, I say that in a nice way. Right. Because you, in all honesty, it's a private humiliation. It is. It is. He doesn't expose you in front of everyone. He deals with you personally on a personal level. It's just well, the difference is that it's, you know, so many people are like walking around like rock stars, like they're in revival. And, and again, I'll say that's just <laughs> not what the not Holy it. Spirit doesn't work like that. And so, you know, we have to, as I think as the church as a whole needs to cut down this whole rock star um, mentality um, that, that that's how God moves. Like that person's anointed because they're popular. No, that's, that's because of social media and that that's a worldly concept. That's not a kingdom concept. Yeah. And I, you know, I'll say this way, if you want to move of God, revival kills rock stars. Like it yeah, just, absolutely. It just happens. Like you, you just can't, if you really want the Lord to move and touch you and touch your church or touch your family, he has a way. And it's a wonderful, it, I, I think a lot of people, it sounds scary and it does sound scary, but it's wonderful. Yeah. That he expo- you know, really yeah. what happens is all those withered places in our lives, they're the things that are hindering us. Right. They're the things that are keeping us in, our, in the wrong place. They're the things that are stopping us. You know, I remember when we first saw Revival in Toronto, I can't forget, I don't know who said it. I can see his face, but I, did, I don't know who he is. A preacher was saying this, but he says, uh, he was first saying God's made amateurs out of all of us. Yeah. He said last year, I was an amateur when the Holy Spirit touched me. This year, I'm more of an amateur. He said, next year, I'll be more of an amateur. He said, but we have to ask the Lord to remove all those things that keep us from crying, that keep us from laughing, that keep us from shouting, that keep us from dancing. He's like, those hindrances, those are the things the Lord wants to remove. And you don't know how wonderful it is until you get to the other side. And when you get to the other side of freedom, you look back and you're like, well, it's terrible when I was trying to protect myself all the time. I was trying to keep myself good all the time. I was trying to keep everyone out all the time. Revival hits you and you're just like, I'm open. I'm free. I'm a child. I'm I'm free. I guess that's the greatest thing is freedom. Well, and and so, the key really yeah. is in, in weakness is that he's making us strong through that. Amen. He's strengthening us. And, and you know, I want, I want to say that I, I'm looking at a room full of rock stars every single week. Yeah. They're not rock stars not- to any, anybody else, but they're rock stars to me because I know where you were and I know what God is doing in your lives. And I see the strength in your families. I see the strength in your marriages. I see the strength in your workplaces. I see Absolutely. how you minister to people. I see how you pour joy out on everybody you right. encounter. I, you know, I, I see what's coming out of you, the anointing that's coming out of you. And so whether anybody else sees it or not, you're all rock stars to me. So. Amen. Amen. She means that in a good way. I do. I know. I do. What stuck. I'm saying, you know so, what I mean. I know what you mean. I you're all you mean. wonderful and you're doing exactly what God is calling you to do. Praise God. Praise God. It's amazing. And that's because they were willing to let the Lord yeah. reveal, reveal the issues, you know, that we all have. Okay. Right. And now God has strengthened them and done a great work. So number seven, I'll give you this. I got to speed up a little bit like every Sunday when I'm trying to burn through these meetings. <laughs> ah, Holly, Rockstar just subscribed. I love it. You're my guy. There you go. Let's see. Will, will revival kill him? Will revive? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Help Rockstar, Lord. Help him. Help him. Okay, uh, her, help her. I don't know, maybe it's her. Okay, but uh, number seven, you got to understand this and prepare. I guess is the best way I can say it. Revival will cost you. Will cause you. I'll say it this way: understand that revival will cause you to lose everything and everyone 
you do not need. Yeah. Revival, if you really just say, I want everything you have for me, God, it will cause you to lose everything and everyone that you do not need. When revival hit, I didn't know people could hate me so much when they used to love me so much or I tolerate me so much. Maybe that was it. They were t- nicely tolerating. When revival hit, my goodness, like the truth came out of stuff, okay? And people hated me. And I, Okay, I don't miss a single one. Praise God. I remember things I lost. Don't miss a, th- a single bit of it, okay? Because revival was worth it. And I'll say more of that in a minute. But I'll just tell you that you got to prepare. You will lose everything you don't need. I lost nothing that I needed, okay? And I'm happier now than ever before and more free than ever before. And so if there's people out there that hate me, I don't miss you. Like, I'm sorry. And I mean that as kind, as nice as I can. I I don't know. But I realize I don't need you in my life. And actually, I'm doing better without you. And I say that, bless you. I pray you have a great life without me. Okay, I pray you don't need me. Okay, Uh, but it's been wonderful what God has done in that. Uh, Let me give you a scripture. Let's see. Uh, Matthew 7, 14. Is that the right one? Yeah. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. Life, life. Revival is life. Yeah. It's a narrow road and it's a difficult path. But once you get there, it's life. It's wonderful and it's amazing. It's bliss life. It's bliss. Yeah. It is. That remind me of that time early in the, early in revival. We were praying every night, bless, be blessed, be blessed. We always say that, be blessed, be blessed. I want everyone listening, everyone there, be blessed. Seriously, tonight, mm-hmm. just right now, be blessed in Come Jesus' on. name. But I remember the night the Lord kept saying the word bliss, 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 which is like ecstatic joy in the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And we just started saying, bliss, be blissed, be blissed, be blissed. And dude, <laughs> it was like a drunken bunch of crazy people <laughs> under the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, yeah, amen. Well, let me give you another one. Number eight. For those that are taking notes, I don't know if you are or not. Number eight, under you got to understand this. Here's something you can do to prepare. Understand that even though revival starts in a moment, you know, September 27, 2016, I refer to it because that's the night it started. Uh, even though it starts in a moment, it takes time to fully receive. A lot of people yeah. don't get that. They come to one meeting, they're like, you guys are crazy, I don't get this. You have to just kind of, <laughs> God bless Bliss for uh, subscribing. That might be our cat at home. Do you think she's got one of those? Yeah. My cat's name. <laughs> her cat's name, not my cat's name. The cat hates me. But uh, Yeah, but you caught the cat for me. Yeah, so. I gave her the cat. I, I've imprisoned the cat and gave it to my family. Um, but but anyway, uh, <laughs> Kilty Preacher said, bliss faced. That's where it's at. But even though revival starts for a moment, in a moment, it takes time to fully receive everything God has for you. It's like, I think it was Carol Arnett, maybe it was before her, but she always said it, about like you have to see it like you're a sponge, and you have to soak up everything that God has. And it takes time to be fully saturated. And so when, when the move of God began, one of the first things we did, we started having nightly meetings, like every night. Those meetings went to 120 days right off the bat. 120 consecutive, never-ending days. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's like, you got to have everything. You got to have, this, this oil has to get to your very bones. Like it has to touch every part of you. I have to get to every piece that's available. And so you have to have time to receive everything. Those that you might be thinking, I'm going to get down to Hearst and I want to get there to these meetings. We'll do everything. To, uh, you know, if you come one day, we'll do everything we do, we can to give you everything that God's given us. But really, I'd be like, come for a month. Yeah. Come for a month and just get all the prayer you can. Don't come down to minister. Don't come down to prophesy. Just come down to receive and just take it and take it and take it and take it. Because you can't fake it. You can't make it, but you can take it. Okay. Amen. Uh, what's the scripture we got? Ephesians 5.18? Yes. That the Be constantly being filled with the Spirit. Yeah. So you got to get you got to get blasted, 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 blasted. Yeah. Then you got to come back next day, get filled, 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 filled. You got to come back the next day, get slosh, 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 slosh. You got to come back the next day, get blissed and blissed and blissed. I mean, it's just like over and over and over. And if there's not a meeting, you call somebody that was at the meeting. You're like, can you pray for me right now? You text the number. Hey, can you pray for me right now? Just say the just say the word more. You know, that's the best thing. Just more, more, God. Just touch them and give them more because you always need more. And so it takes sometimes. I think the word that they said that's going to go into Webster's Dictionary this year is a word I created, receivey. I'm just kidding. But um, you have to be receivey. You have, have to, to be, be You have to be constantly receivey over and over. Yes, 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 Lord. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Even if it's not what I thought or planned, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. And so, uh, yeah, you got you to you take time to receive. Number nine, um, you got to get this. You got to understand. Here's a way you can prepare. No matter, just, just prepare yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you with this. No matter the offense that is brought to the top in you, 
no matter the attacks that come from those around you, because it will come, <laughs> no matter what, revival's worth it all. You have to understand that. Get yourself right. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. You know, I, was, I think I mentioned Jonathan Edwards a while ago on The Great Awakening. We always talk about it, about it being the greatest move of God that ever touched America, you know. We would think everybody's for it. Everybody loves it today. Every preacher, Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, they're all like, Jonathan Edwards, great man of God. Everyone thinks that, except for everyone that was alive when it was happening. Right. He was so hated. He was so I mean, attacked on every side. And it was because if you've ever read it, read the story, his wife was like drunk in the Holy Spirit for 14 days. If you said the name of Jesus, she went under the power. The meetings were like full of people laughing and shouting, screaming. I mean, it was like, it was out of control in church, stand, uh, you know, to church standards. We don't get that in his, no one reads about that. No one, no one knows that Charles Spurgeon was filled with the Holy Spirit and had holy laughter hit him. We don't want to talk about that. We always want to talk about the respectable things. But at the time, everybody hated him. And so you have to kind of prepare yourself of like, it's all going to come but it's worth it all. I, I guarantee Charles Spurgeon, when he stepped into heaven, he was like, it was worth it all. Like it was Come so on. good. It was at worth every attack, every slander. It was worth it all. And so you got to get ready for that. Amen. Amen. Do you think we were ready for it? <sighs> no. <laughs> well, some, okay. Some, some, we were ready for some, the type. We I, were ready for what it, we, I'm going to say this. Yeah, go. We as a church have stood on and preached all or nothing for years and years and years and years. And I meant that. That's why I taught it. That's why we had a school called the School of All or Nothing. Okay, so I meant that. And but but I didn't. I guess I was caught off guard because a flaw in myself of being way too trusting of people and and needing people way too much. That was something the Holy Spirit stripped me of. Okay, so I was shocked by people that I I thought were my closest friends turning against us and, and having hatred in the heart. I didn't understand. I could not yeah. understand it. Okay. So I was cut off, but then the Holy Spirit began to just show me the signs of the times and, and you know, what was happening. And, and, and you would pose a question to me all the time. Um, but, but are you going to keep following Jesus? And every day my answer would be yes. Yes. It doesn't matter the Amen. pain. It doesn't matter what, what demonic thing is coming at me. It doesn't matter what some nasty thing was said about me online. Um, which is has such a demonic presence with it. I just it was like, no, but Jesus, you're worth it. Jesus, I, 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 I said, you know, we, we always talk about in the end times, if someone put a gun to right. your head, would you deny Christ? Absolutely not. So um, during that persecution, I wasn't going to deny, deny him then. I wasn't going to let revival right. wane just because my feelings got hurt. And now it feels like nothing. Oh, it I was worth it. I wasn't shocked at people turning like so fast oh, I, was. I wasn't because i'd read the books and i'd been around it and plus i've cast out enough demons to know when someone's been totally demonized with yeah. hatred i mean seriously i was, it was naive like, i was naive i mean that's just when the, you see people you know. that love god on thursday and then they want to murder people on friday i'm like it's the devil like yeah. it's not so i wasn't shocked i was more shocked back then that they didn't want the move of God yeah, for themselves, for themselves, totally for themselves, not for this church. Oh my goodness. This church is totally expendable at the end of the day, but for themselves, that was kind of sad, but now who cares? You know what I'm saying? People are going to do what they're going to do. And if you want right. revival, you'll get there. If you're hungry for God, you'll make a way. I've, I've been everywhere and anywhere I can get to when the move of God's happening. Amen. Amen. I'm serious. So I know what that's like. If you're hungry, you'll get, you'll get the food. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so if you don't want it, that's on you and you'll deal with that in eternity. And Hey, Blessings help, you know, I hope the Holy Ghost helps you. So, you know, you know what I'm saying, but I'm over that stuff. But um, it's been so worth it that that's why I talk about things now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, and it has, been, it has been worth it. Let me tell you, my goodness, I was thinking this morning, I woke up and I was like, God has just been so good to us over the last six years. It's been oh my shocking goodness, and yes. amazing how amazing, like every area of life, every area of life. And so I'll give you one more. I'll give you one more. I'll, I'll stick to that one all night. Number 10, final, okay. Here's something you can do to prepare for a move of God. Uh, you can understand or ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand this, that revival will reveal or reveals the true heart of Christianity. This is a good one. Prepare yourself. Revival reveals the, the true core of Christianity, the whole purpose of why we're here, the whole relationship that God the Father wants with us. And the best scripture and everyone that's been in these meetings, you'll recognize it very quickly, is 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Right. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
What we found in revival, and I guess in the, in the little taste we had in it years ago when we were in other people, in the move of God, to people, um, God was using other people's lives. We got around the Arnots and stuff like that. Yeah. We got around Rodney Har Brown. We got even around Pastor Parsley, places like that. Um, we got a little, a drip of it. But when revival hit here, suddenly we were like, oh, the whole thing, the whole, whole thing of Christianity, the whole bit is about the grace of Jesus. He wants to just forgive you and accept you and bring you close. It's about the love of the Father. He wants you to understand you're a child that he is, that's his child, that he's a good father, and he really loves you no matter your faults. He just loves you. And then the Holy Spirit is here as the greatest friend that we can fellowship with, listen to, spend time with, be led by. Like you get down to Amen. it, you're like, like revival removes the blinders of religion. It remo- It just tears yes. down the veils. Yes. And you suddenly realize like the goodness, the kindness, the tenderness of God and the whole reason we were created to be, people always say, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. It's a good tagline, make it a bumper sticker, whatever. But there's a true relationship that suddenly you find in a move of God that you're like, oh, you're not, you're not looking for me to be a worker or a slave. Like you actually want to love me as your child. You want to accept me every day of my life, no matter my faults, no matter my brokenness, no matter the lowness I've been. And then you want to be this close fellowshipping friend that never leaves me and always leads me to good things. And so revival has just stripped us of everything else. And it's yeah. just pleasure and right. amazing and peace. It's yeah. love. It's just so great to be needy of him and him alone. And, and like you said, it does take off the blinders that nothing else satisfies. You know, we sing all these songs, you know, that say nothing else satisfies and, you know, and, but I, I think it's all fluff because you don't know any better. Until you actually experience it. And then once you have tasted, really tasted and seen that the Lord's going to, and, and realize that it, it, there is a deeper level of relationship that goes Amen. beyond initial salvation. I mean, there's just such a so deep intimacy. More. There's so much more. The kingdom of heaven is so huge. And you start to get that deposited in you. You can't help but be hungry for more and more and more Amen. and more and more. And and I will be that way until he takes me home. And I want to be so filled with with the kingdom. You say this all the time that there's a day where I won't even notice that I went from earth to heaven yeah. because I, I let heaven come to fill my life now. Amen. Amen. And yeah, it's been wonderful. And you know, for all those listening, all those watching, I just encourage you to just have a hard yes in your spirit for everything God wants to give you and do in you in this season. Anything he wants Amen. to take away, anything Amen. he wants to plant in you, anything he wants to, I don't know, give you new freedom in, deliver you from whatever. Don't even put all those labels on it. Just everything he has. Just yeah. just have a hard yes. So no matter what, you're just like, yes, yes, yes. The offense comes, yes. Like next Sunday, you might come in here and I'm like, I never realized how much I hate Pastor Cletus. Okay, well, in that moment, just go, but Holy Spirit, yes to you. Or you come in here like, oh, Lady Nicole wasn't even nice to me. She didn't shake my hand. Whatever. I don't know. Make up something. You know, I hate the color of the carpet. I hate that all the walls are black in this place. Okay. Just at that moment, hard yes to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the kingdom of God is not about deliverance Bible church. The kingdom of God is not about Pastor Cleus and Lady Nicole, revival of souls, whatever. Fill it. It's not about any of those things. It's about you and the Lord, this wonderful relationship he wants to give you and he wants to live with you in. And so hard yes. Everybody in the chat, you might just want to say yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. You know, say yes a thousand times. And for those that have no idea what we're talking about, start with that. Yes, God. I just say yes. You might not have the words, but you can start with yes. He's a good God and he wants to bless you and he wants to help you. Well, hey, our next meeting with God, that's what we call the meetings here because they're just meetings with God. They're not really services. The next meeting with God at Deliverance Bible Church will be this Sunday, May 22nd, 2 p.m., as usual, 2 p.m. I guess we'll, yeah. we'll stick to that. So yeah, meeting with God Sunday, May 22nd at 2 p.m. And we're at Deliverance Bible Church, 310 West Pipeline Road in Hearst, Texas. That's 310 West Pipeline Road in Hearst, Texas. Also, hopefully this Wednesday, if you guys subs- have, if you guys follow us on YouTube, I think my YouTube channel is Pastor Cletus. And so go on there, make sure you subscribe, hit whatever the, whatever people do on YouTube. We barely use it, okay? Hit the bell, whatever, whatever it <laughs> is, okay? Uh, you know, because you want to see your boy, Pastor Cleese, do his video. Okay, anyway, but this this Wednesday, hopefully, I got a good interview. I'm getting ready to post. It's me and the kilted preacher. Come on now. We spent like 30 minutes, an hour, something like that. We sat here in this, office, in this room last week. 
this week, this week, last few days ago. It's an awesome interview, and you got we talk about Joe Biden even. So you know it's worth your time. We talk about great. the Holy Ghost. It, it was, was great. Good. It was really. Oh good. yeah, I got CGA four on the board tonight. He's just uh, there. He going? is. It was great. You have to look in that mic and go. It was great. It was great. Get your camera time. There you go. <laughs> Amen. And I'm in the room with. I got Jacob Isaiah. I got. I got Lady Victory. I'll just. Uh, I don't know. I got Victory Faith. Holla. Okay. Hello. There we go. Okay. Anyway, but this this Wednesday, I should have it up. So everyone, make sure you're you're following us over there, and always make sure you're subscribing here on Twitch. But you're gonna yes. want it. You're gonna want to see it. It's great, dude. It's, it's it's just a really good interview, and hopefully, we'll get to do much more like that. And so that's this Wednesday Wednesday on my YouTube channel. Are you? It just happens to have my. And we also voice. we also post all the previous streams on YouTube. Oh yeah, so that's so how you, Chris said. That's how he found us was nice. through the YouTube. Nice. You know, awesome. every time I see your shot, I know we got to go, but every time I see your shot, don't we I usually try? have like a. Don't we have like a, a sponsor or something like that? Oh, yeah. Throw yeah. one in. What's our sponsor right our now? Our sponsor is. Is it still it's there? Is it there? Raise hey, energy. oh, there we there go. It yeah, so it's still Raise Energy. If you like use energy drinks, Revival go ahead and, and go on there and use our coupon code, Revival and Souls, and they'll give us a few pennies every once in a while. Yeah. And you'll you'll be like pumped and like jittery, and you'll be like, Revival and Souls. <laughs> I supported them. That's what I'm doing. And yeah, you know. Whatever. Okay, so you want to be here this Sunday, and you want to get that video on Wednesday. And also, if this has been a blessing to you, ask the Holy Spirit right now, how can I sow in this ministry? How can I be a part of everything happening in this move of God? The best way you can sow in this ministry is through Cash App and PayPal. I think he's going to throw them in the chat right now. Our Cash App is dollar sign Revival and Souls over at PayPal. We're Revival and Souls, but you can hit those links, I believe. And if not, you can copy-paste them like it's 1997, and you can do that. Amen. But uh, whatever you do, don't do nothing. Ask the Holy Spirit how you can give, how you can sow. And we always pray a hundredfold return over you and that God will open the heavens over you and you'd have too much to even know what to do with because we believe now. in prosperity and we believe in your prosperity and your blessing. Well, I'm going to pray for you. Are you. How about you pray for him? Pray for yeah, everybody and bless, bless them. And Thanks we'll go again home. for tuning in Hallelujah. tonight. And I just hope this has been a blessing to you. But Amen. let's pray. Father, we just love you and we thank you for this time together. Thank you for just everyone that's been tuning in and even um, our new friends that have been Amen. tuning in tonight. Father, I just ask that you would bless them, that you would just cover them, that you would just fill them with more of you, that whatever the cry of their heart is, Father, would you just come in and just touch them and just um, give them more of you and just love on them yes, and just God. bless them in every area of their life. We just thank you for being such a good father. And we just ask for more, more, more of you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Jesus, for your holy, righteous yes, blood. Yes, God. The righteous blood that sets us free. Thank you for that cross that sets us free and lets us come boldly to the throne room of the Father. We just bless your holy name, God. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. We'll see you this Sunday at 2 p.m. at the yes. Bible Church. In the meantime, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Just receive his blessing. Just receive his goodness, his righteousness, and the gift.